Well, from the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, a repository for wit and wisdom in these times of distress, why don't we take another look back at the week that was. President Trump announced that Congressman Mark Meadows will replace Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. Now, Meadows was already planning to leave Congress this year, while Mulvaney is set to become Trump's special envoy to Northern Ireland. I'll note that in the name of saving the taxpayers' money, that if Mick Mulvaney has any monogrammed office towels, they can be left behind for Mark Meadows to reuse. How about that? <laughs> and President Trump now has fewer challenges on the Democratic side of the aisle, just Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Tulsi Gabbard. Gabbard is calling on Biden and Sanders to do the right thing and demand that the DNC allow her into the next debate. See, the DNC changed the rules to keep her out after previously changing in the, in the other direction in order to allow Mike Bloomberg in. If Gabbard is kept out, that would leave the Democrats with two straight white male old men, while barring the only woman in racial minority still in the race. So much for the party of diversity. <laughs> and finally, Panic surrounding coronavirus continues unabated as consumers, not just in the U.S., but around the world, stockpile toilet paper for some reason. Maybe someone ought to tell them this is a respiratory virus. <laughs> just saying. But there was a family in Australia who wins the award for the most toilet paper purchased during pandemic panic. How much did they buy? 12 years worth. Granted, it was an accident, no pun intended. <laughs> they actually meant to order 48 rolls of toilet paper, but instead they ordered 48 boxes. The family now owns more than 2,000 rolls, are the equivalent of several copies of the New York Times or the Washington Post. <laughs> And Keith told me he's got a couple of doozies from the My Two Cents mailbox. But before I throw it to Keith, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, you ought to do that. The button is just about an inch below the video. And hit the notification bell so that YouTube is forced to tell you when we upload new videos. They really hate doing it. So you ought to make them just out of spite, if nothing else. So, okay, Keith. What kind of questions have you got for me tonight? Oh, I've got some good ones for you tonight, Governor. First of all, Dan from Duquesne is a little nervous. Hmm. He asks, the coronavirus scare has me more scared about my retirement investments than the actual physical virus. Any ideas for a safe, conservative investment for someone in their mid-50s? Absolutely, Dan. Here's what I recommend. Get all of your assets and money, your stocks and everything, bundle it up, and send it to me. <laughs> that's what I recommend. It will not help your retirement, but boy, will it do something for mine. So that's, that's my advice. All right, since you're probably not gonna do that, seriously, I think people worry about the stock market. And unless you're about to need to cash all of your stocks in right now or in the next two to three, four months, relax. Look at stocks over a period of years, not days, weeks, months. And I know people that will hear the stock market's up or it's down and they get all panicked and they, they lose sleep over it. Quit that. If it bothers you that much, uh, put your money in a mattress. But for heaven's sakes, realize that over a long period of time, money in the stock market historically has always gone up over a period of time. And if you just relax about it and let it grow, you'll be fine. You got another one? Oh, yeah. Pamela from Illinois. She has a bright idea. She says, we're watching a war over unborn babies in Washington between liberals and conservatives. Liberals have always supported prison rather than the death penalty. Why do we not propose a protection over unborn in return for protection over adults in prison? Sanctity of life from conception to the grave. That's not a bad idea. And, uh, you know, I do not understand how people can think that the life of an unborn child, an innocent, delightful human being, uh, does not matter. And I, I believe it goes all the way to who we are as a country. I think it's written into our Constitution in both the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment. Uh, I believe the answer to abortion 
The answer to taking the lives of unborn children is recognizing the personhood of that baby. Because it's not just a blob of tissues, it's not a clump of cells, it is a human life because it has a DNA uh, imprint that is unique and it is unlike any person that's ever been and it will grow into a person even though it may be just a, a tiny little cell at first, but it is unique. It'll never become broccoli, a puppy, or a dolphin. It'll only be a human being, and that's why we ought to protect it. And the 5th and 14th Amendments both say that you can't deprive a person of their basic fundamental rights without due process. And the process we have for abortion deprives people of their due process. And I hope someday we recognize the personhood of every person. Okay, Keith. Well, Lowell on Gmail asked, just watch your facts of the matter segment, like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. and, and you did one on transgenders and athletics. Now, if a person, follow this closely, if a person who was born male but identifies as a female can compete as a woman in an athletic event, maybe a 22-year-old who identifies as a 72-year-old could compete in the Senior Olympics. And why not? Yeah. Why not indeed? And that 22-year-old would win the Senior Olympics every <laughs> single time. Hands down. And, and you know, we, we're laughing about that, but the truth is, if you can just imagine yourself to be something that you're not and then participate, that means that, uh, you know, you and I can pretend to be old enough to get the senior discount at the Golden Corral, which we both know we're not old enough for that, right? Uh, you just keep on thinking that, guys. I guess the audience must be about that old because they didn't yeah. even think that was funny. No. That's pretty sad. All right, for my Twitter page at GovMikeHuckabee comes a story on the softer side of crime and its cost to law-abiding citizens. New York's new law allows criminals released without bail to commit the exact same crimes over and over. In New York City, major crimes are up 22.5% from February of a year ago. Shootings up 7.1%. Here's my question. Are you sure you want liberals running the whole country? Yeah, me neither. There you go. <laughs> and speaking, <laughs> speaking of crime in New York, Rodney Dangerfield, who grew up in Queens, once said, I came from a real tough neighborhood. Once a guy pulled a knife on me. I knew he wasn't a professional because the knife still had butter on it. Well, I guess with that, we're going to slide on out of here. And until next time, these are the facts of the matter.